crucified. What does it mean, really? Be crucified with Christ. I don't, but I would rather say identifying in, in, with Christ in his death and resurrection than just saying being crucified with Christ because in the end, it's like big words that, you know, um, maybe, okay, I would say that I've got a thing, thing I, I, I praise God for that, that I, I have this way of bringing the word in a practical way because I've seen that when I was in Haiti, it really was like a rhema to myself that when, uh, that I'm not theological, really. Um, I just bring the word the way that everyone can understand and grab it and start using it right there, right there. And I think that's something God wants to give me that way. And I praise him for that. Because when you come to someone and say, being crucified, what does it mean exactly? But when I say being identified with Christ in his death and resurrection, it makes more sense because we know that he died. But identifying with someone is trying to be um, like that person. We, we see movie stars, for instance, everyone wants to identify with them. Sometimes what do people do when they want to identify with a rock star? They start dressing up as a rock star. When you want to identify with your, someone you admire, you start speaking like them, you start walking like them, you start doing things exactly like them. So I think it, 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 was, it speaks more to us than just saying being crucified with Christ. Like, you know, you are crucified in Christ. What does it mean, being crucified? I'm not on the cross now. So that's why people may not understand exactly what it means. But if we're trying to see how we can be identified, yes, how we can be identified, we, we ourselves are identifying ourselves with Christ, it means that we see him as like that person in the world who is looking at a rock star, thinking, okay, this is my idol. I want to, you know, we've seen people start to dress in like cowboys. You know what I mean? They, I mean, you live, you don't live in Texas. Where you live, there's no desert. But you see them in the middle of Paris, in the middle of London, just like a cowboy. Why? Because they want to identify with a cowboy. You see? It's the same thing, being identified with Christ in his death. So it's actually imagining and having in the mind that Christ has died. And so if he's dead, so I'm dead as well. Amen? And if he's resurrected, I am resurrected as well. So that's what it is that we're going to be talking about throughout this month. And also know the impact of it. Just like that person who in the middle of the city is dressed like a cowboy. You will see him having those cigarettes, you know, having the attitude, you know, as a cowboy. And that person may not have ever been to Texas. He may not have has ever seen even a horse sometimes. Or even a ranch, you see. But everything, just when you see them, no one has to tell you that that person likes cowboys. You know, it's just the attitude, the talking, the dress. Everything tells you that is a fan of cowboys, you see? So we as Christians, that's how we should be, you know? In terms of Christianity, in terms of Christ, when people see us, you see, because we are so um, identified with Christ in his death and resurrection, you see, the problem is that people want to identify with Christ the Lamb of God, you see? The love of God, I mean, the Christ who came, who was ministering to people. But no one wants to identify with his death because it means that you're dead. <laughs> you see? No one wants to identify with Christ, the, the death, the dead Christ, or the resurrected one. Because for you to be resurrected, you first need to die. So that's the reason why many people are stuck in their walk with the Lord. Because they first, it's only about Christ, the Lamb of God. You see? The one who was walking that this person sick and healed them. So people are stuck on that, on Christ um, on earth. I don't know if you understand what I mean. But Christ uh, who, who came to die, no one wants to identify because death, no one wants death. No one wants to die. But Christ said that if you keep your life, you lose it. So you need to die to self. You need to die to who you are to become resurrected. So if there's no death, there's no resurrection. See? So that's the reason why I'm not saying that it's wrong to say identify with the resurrected Christ. No. But if you want to be identified with the resurrected Christ, you first need to be identified with the dead Christ. When he was dead. Amen? So, now, when Christ died on the cross, you see, he was the Lamb of God. That's what I just said. He was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of John. John 1 verse 29. Now, because we were not qualified to become uh, children of God without Christ. Why? Because we could not fulfill the law. 
we could not make everything perfect enough for God to accept us to come near him. You see? Therefore, God himself, God is the one who found the solution. You see? So it is God who made the way down to find the solution so that we can have access back to him. That access that was broken from Adam and Eve. And that's the reason why Christ has to come as the Lamb of God. But the fact is that he had to die. If Christ did not die, this would not have happened. But now, I want us first to go back on the book of Genesis. Look at what happened in Genesis. You see, we've got a God, I'm talking about God the Father now, who is the Father of Covenant. He is a God of Covenant. Because he saw that, uh, the Bible says that Abraham is the father of faith. But I will tell you that when you read well, you're going to see that before Abraham became the father of faith, his faith was a bit short. He didn't have 100% faith in God, as we think. Because God said to him, okay, I'll give you a land, and in that land I'll prosper you. Of course he obeyed, but he went blindly. Do you understand? But why is it God had to make a covenant with him? I think God made a covenant so that he gives him more strength in his faith. Do you understand? If he had 100% faith, God would have made a covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham because Abraham's faith was not 100% in God. He, of course, he obeyed. He was obedient. God said, stand up and go. He stood up and left. But, but, I think God knew that his, the faith that you got in me is not 100%. Therefore, I'm going to make a covenant so that you are reassured that I'm going to do what I'm telling you I'm going to do. So God made a covenant with Abraham, you see? And that was to strengthen his faith. So what did God do? He, he told Abraham to get three cattle, yeah? And two birds, and to slaughter them, yeah? Which means cut the cattle. But he also told him to leave the birds alive. You see, that was already the sign of something dying and something else alive, which is death and resurrection. So. All the plans of Christ coming on earth was already designed from Genesis. Which means that, you see, when we are living in Christ, I don't know why we are worried. I really don't know why we are worried. Because everything that happens to us is, is, is already decided on our Genesis. Our Genesis is when we started life on this earth. You see? Because God, what he did with, in the book of Genesis was come to pass through Christ Jesus. Yeah? So, he gave that he made that covenant with Abraham so that it was actually an image, a symbol, uh, um, something characterizing what he was going to do with Christ later. See, so the cattle that was going to be cut. Listen to this: on the cross, it is God Himself who cut Jesus on the cross. Because you see, if you look in the Old Testament, uh, most priests, uh, whenever there was a sacrifice that was done, the priest or someone had to cut yeah themselves. They had to cut. And then bring it to offer to God. Do you understand? But in this case, who cut Jesus? Who? Man could not, because he is God and he is man. Yeah? He was accused, he was put there, but he's dead. He is dead. It is God who planned it. It is God who planned it. So that's why I'm saying that it's God Himself who had to cut. Yeah? So that it can be acceptable to Him. I hope it is, you understand that. Therefore, now we in Christ, in, in Christ, we enter the same covenant that Abraham had. Amen? Because everything that happened with Jesus leads us back to Genesis with Abraham. Yeah? That's where the link comes to. That, that, that also tells us that today, we as believers of Christ, we've got, we have a good uh, and a huge responsibility. That is what we read in the books of Romans that Pastor always quotes, Pastor Sven always quotes, Romans 6. Yes? Let's say Romans 6, verse 5, for instance. Yeah? And then we're going to read. Okay. And also Romans 7 also. Yeah? It tells us that we have been identified with Christ in his death, and we are also living with him in his resurrection. Romans 6, verse 5. If you've got it, just read for me in Jesus' name. Six verse five. If you have it, for if we have been united with him in a in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
Amen? That's what the Bible says. Verse uh, 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. Um, and sorry, sorry, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. See? Therefore, when we come to Christ, we are already dead to sin. As soon as you accept, if you are identified with Christ, so sin is dead in you. Sin itself is dead. So, okay, now you're going to tell me, yes, okay, true enough, but why is that you still sinning? Then that's where the question is. Why is it you still sinning? Because it just means that you're still letting the world rule you. Just like when you came here, I asked you that has a word beaten you. So, and I asked, who has dominion? Is it you or work? Has school beaten you? Who has dominion? Is it you or school? It's the same thing. Has sin beaten you? Who has dominion? You or sin? That's what's the reason why I asked you that question. So that you understand. Everyone answered me. When I said, who has dominion? You said me. So it's the same with sin. Who has dominion? You. Amen? Because Christ has already done the part of where sin is dead. In your body. In you. So, and you can be offered as a living sacrifice to God. You can be a saint before God. You are justified before God. So that is already done. But now, who has dominion? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. If I am dead to sin, then sin can no longer, I mean, control my life. Just like you, when I asked you all, school, work, who has dominion? You said me. So when it comes to sin, people say, oh, it's my weakness, I'm a weakness. It means that you are actually confessing that weakness has dominion on you. Do you understand? Or that sin has dominion on you. But it has to be the contrary. So I hope that you remember that. With that example. About work or school. Who has dominion? It's me. It means that when I've got dominion, I've got control of it. It means that I can tell myself, no, I, can't, I, won't, I won't sin here. No, I'm not going to do this. Because of the cross. Because of what Christ did. Because of the death and resurrection of Christ. I'm not going to do it. Therefore, when you do it, it's you who wanted to do it. I hope you understand that part now. This is what it means being identified with the death of Christ. Yeah, amen? Being crucified, that's what it means really. Because you, when you are in a position to sin, you choose not to. You know? Because that cowboy who is wearing a, a cowboy uniform in a city, my friend, tell him that he's not a cowboy. He will tell you, excuse me. He knows he's a cowboy. You know, people may laugh at, at them because of the way they are dressed, but in their mind, in their way of being, they will remain, they keep that identity. It's the same for us as Christians. When you find yourself in a position to sin, you have to say no. No, because in this position, I've got dominion. Not sin. I've got dominion. I can say no to sin. I can say no to this. Amen? Just like if something is making you tired at school, what do you do? You just drop it. If something is making you tired at work, you try to find another way to get through it. Why is it when sin is in, on, in front of many people, they don't find another way out of it? Because sin has dominated them, and they are not in the dominion of sin. Do you understand? So if you, I, I, you identify yourself with the death of Christ, when you are in front of sin, that's what you do. When you, you have that sin that is in front of you, it's just going to be like, well, there's another way around it. Because no one can tell me that when they sin, they don't know they are not, they are sinning. We know. We know. Someone who lies knows he's lying because he knows where the truth is. Amen? When someone is stealing, it's not your pen. You're taking someone's pen. You know it's not your pen. You know it's not yours. So you've got the choice to go another way around. So that's what I said that we need to remember that dominion is in us. It's not out of us. It's within us. God has given us that dominion already. So we need to see the spiritual Fast and the real things. Amen? And that we have been identified with the crucified and resurrected Christ. I've just explained it in a practical way. I hope that it's more, uh, it's simple, simple now enough for anyone to understand what it means being crucified with Christ. Amen? So, now, we have been crucified with Christ, okay? And the Bible tells us, let's take Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20. It says that, we, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That is a word that is very difficult to understand because we just talked about the death. Now we're going to talk about the resurrection. 
Amen? So we're going to start talking about that. So we've been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer us who live. It is Christ who lives in us. What does it mean? It means that my life does no longer belong to me. That's simple. Simple. If Christ lives in me, I will give you another example. I like practical examples. You know, most women, I'm not talking about those future mothers who have no responsibility, who care about nobody but themselves. I'm talking about a loving mother. A lovely mother to be. Most women, as soon as she becomes pregnant, start being careful. Oh, I can't drink wine. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. You take a mother who is about to give birth, tell her to go and do horses. She will say, hey, sorry, I can't do that. Why? Because they are aware that there is a child inside of them and they can harm that child. Now, it's no longer me who live. It is Christ who lives. And we are told in the Bible that the Spirit of God dwells in us as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, why is your living as if there's no, no one in you? Do you understand? That's what, now we are talking about the resurrected Christ. Amen? So, look, a mother who is, I was giving an example the other day uh, to, to Kweku, listen to this. When I was four months pregnant with Bertrand, my, my, my stomach was as flat as this. It started, you could see that I was pregnant only when it was six months. And it was like, I was just two months pregnant. You know, it was not, and I was so smallish that you could not even see. People were just surprised that I, I gave birth. And I'm telling you, I was in my aunt's place every time. She knew just two months before. She was like, what? I was with her every single day, but she didn't know I was pregnant. And I was dressing with the same dresses. The same dresses. I didn't buy, uh, you know, pregnancy dresses with Bertrand. Only one or two. I had two just towards the end because we were just pointing all of a sudden, you know. But until the six months, I was dressed with the same dresses. Just to tell you, you see. But look at this. Six months pregnant, and I was giving the example to Kweku because he told me that in the lift in um, Wembley, someone died recently in the lift near the guy. You know, the lift that that guy was doing and we were taking once, and then we like, hey, guy. Oh, and he's like, yeah, no, I'm here, I'm repairing. That lift in the parking, someone died. And then they say, oh, wow. And I was telling him this example when I stopped going to nightclubs. Listen, I used to go to nightclubs. I used to go. The last time I decided, the last time we went, I almost died. Look at me, I'm four months pregnant and still going to nightclub. Of course, my stomach is not visible. Only my friends knew I am. So I could dance because you don't know. And I had the energy and everything, and because it's not visible, I'm still just the same way. And I was four months pregnant. But this time we went, we were going to a party and a birthday, and then the lift left the ninth floor and went for, you know, we, are, we were going up lift, and then all of a sudden it stopped. And we expect the lift to open, and then we hear, you know, like a tip going down. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? God is with me. I think he has given me long life. Lord, bless you for that. And he went down. Boom! And what happened? We are stuck here. And it was the time I just had my first mobile phone. I only remember because I was on mobile phone, you know? And we all had mobile phone and we had to call um, emergency, yeah? Because it fell. The, the lift fell, yeah? When they came, because it was winter, thank God, they told us to put our jackets so that they can break the, the glass from outside. And then you know what they told us? That something saved us that day. Because if the lift has hit the floor, we would all have died. We would have taken fire, you know? But something, I don't know where it came, like um, iron something, came and blocked the lift from not touching the floor. My friend, after that, I never went to bed night floor or parties again. You understand? You know, sometimes like that. Okay. Now coming back to the story that I'm going, uh, that I'm talking about with the, the 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 word of God. Sometimes that's what we need. You are there. You do. You do. You do. Look, I was pregnant. I should be home. What am I looking for outside? I should be home. Yeah. You're already pregnant. What are you going night clubbing? We were going to a, a, a party, and then after the party, we were going to go to night club. You see, from there, from that day, no one told me to really stop going night clubbing. Do you understand? Do you know, sometimes things like that happen to us? Did it, because I was unconscious. 
I've got to admit it. This was not being responsible. What a four month pregnant mom, future mom, what are you doing in a lift, going to party in a birthday and then planning to go in nightclub after? You know? The birthday ended in my bed because I was so scared now. You, you know? Because you can imagine when they have, you know, the big, you know, the, the lift has big, big glasses. They have to break it over us. If it was not winter, what would it be? You know, it would have been touching us. So all that image was there. I'm like, nah, 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 it's enough now. You see, it's that sometimes we find ourselves in those situations, but who sent us? Who sent us? So when you're a Christian, it's the same thing. There are things you need to know that at this stage, I should no longer do them. Because the Holy Spirit is within me. The Holy Spirit is within me. So I can no longer do this. The Bible says, do not quench the Spirit. Do not make the Holy Spirit sad. People forget that the Holy Spirit has feelings. Whenever you sin, you make him sad. Whenever you lie, my friend, you make him, you know, you know, people think that we can just walk like that. He is there. Just like, you know, they say, they say that a, a, a baby inside hears. I'm telling you the truth. He hears. I remember, you know, when I, I, I gave birth to Bertrand, they, they took me in an ambulance, you know, and they were doing that noise, ambulance noise. And when Bertrand was born, every time at home, even if he's, um, he's being fed, when he hears an ambulance, he stops to, to listen. He was listening. Just before he came uh, on, on this earth, that was the noise he heard. He's an ambulance who took me to the hospital. And every time that there was an ambulance, they were going be in Paris, Bertrand would stop. And I'm like, yeah. So he heard that noise. You see? It's the same thing. The Holy Spirit sees everything. So we affect him. And, and people want to live a, a life of the resurrected life. You know what the resurrected life is? It's the life that is so rich. It is the life that has life in it. Resurrection is about life. But many believers live a dead life. A life that has no resurrection. Because the Holy Spirit within us is totally saddened. We, we make him, we put him in a, such a box with our ways and the things we do that the resurrection life cannot take place. You see? And this is where we need to understand what it means being crucified with Christ. I explained about being dead with Christ and our being crucified, being resurrected and accepting that life. Which means that there are things that, as soon as I know the Holy Spirit is within me, I can no longer do. You see, they are now, even worse, people now, they become moms. Yeah? And you continue. Look at how many children I'm working with them. Uh, totally, uh, you know that because the parents never stopped having drugs when they were pregnant. Do you understand? This is being irresponsible. And we do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is within you. You were this in the past. Jesus has already made to show that you are no longer that person, but you let that sin, that weakness, that whatever control you. How can the resurrected life be in you? How can it manifest in you? That is what we are talking about this month. When we are one with the crucified and resurrected Christ, we are one with all the brothers and sisters. And we enter into the position of the good land. You see? If you are good with everyone, God sees goodness in you. I hear people saying, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Who told you you're good? You cannot be picking, choosing people, doing, do, 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 and then, yeah, and have problems here and there, and then saying you're a good person. No, it is God who knows if you are good. You know you are good when you are truly identified with Christ. Amen? In his death and resurrection. So that's one thing to know about being identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. Now, when Christ died, as I said earlier, it was a, um, he died as the Lamb of God who took away our sins, yeah, the sin of the world, but it's also a, an image, as I said, of God uh, carrying out the plan that was fulfilled in Genesis. Amen? So, and I remember uh, Pastor Jared telling me once, a long time ago that, when something happens, always go to the beginning of the story. And it's true. You know, when, imagine something, imagine, okay, let's say I'm standing here. Oh, let, okay. The best example is this cupboard. We all know it's not standing anymore. Yeah? One day, it will go flat, ping. But people are going to think it just fell. No. The beginning of the story is that it fell a year ago. 
It's not because it is standing that it means that the cupboard is fine. Always go in the beginning. The beginning is when someone climbed on it and broke it. It was fixed, yeah, fair enough. But the beginning is the day it was truly broken. It looks all right. But one day it goes bang. You see? So when some, something happens to someone or they do a scene or something like that, people never go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning. Why did I do this? Why? If you go at the source of everything, it will be easier for you to enter that life that Christ is offering us. Amen? Otherwise, you're going to always be humming at the top of things, hovering around, going around, you know, turning and beating about the bush on problems. Why? It's not about beating about the bush on problems. It's about facing the problems so that you can enter the resurrection, the, res the resurrection that is offered in Christ. Amen? Amen? Now, by our own means, we cannot. By our own means, we cannot. The only means to get in there is the word of God. That we apply. If you don't apply the word of God, there's no point. You know, I'm tired of people who know all the songs. I'm tired of those people. Yeah? There are people who know all the songs. They quote it, hey, my friend, even me sometimes, I'm like, which one is that? I don't know. They will tell you some this and they tell you, hey, man, the Lord is my shepherd, they never, 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 never come A to Z. But when you see them in a situation, they forgot that they just said, the Lord is my shepherd. Do you understand? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fear. A little problem comes, they are running away like a little dog has barked on them. I'm like, my friend, you just said the Lord is your shepherd. I shall not fear. Eh. What is happening? So if you want to quote the word, make sure that you quote the word that you have understood and that is alive in you. Amen? That is the resurrection life. If the word is not alive in you, why are you quoting it? You know, to make sure that people know you know the Bible. Well, you can know all the Bible. It means nothing. The Logos will take you nowhere, but the Rabbi will change your life. Because the Rabbi is the revelation that the Spirit of God will give you in a way that you understand that there's something that needs to be changed. It's not, there's no point just saying, oh yes, I know, I know, I know. You know, fair enough. But when they give you the test, you bring, you bring a zero. What is that? Yeah, I know the word, I know. But when the test comes, zero. Yeah? Why? Many people are like that in the, in the, in, in, in the church of, of, of God today. Zero, when they have a test. Because they don't know how to apply the word of God and they don't even know how to stop with the word of God. And we need to understand that that's not what the Lord wants for us. Amen? Now, in, all, in order to fulfill God's eternal purpose, we need to be identified with Christ in his crucifixion and his resurrection. If you want to really fulfill God's purpose for you on this earth, it starts with Christ. It starts with Christ. Someone gave me an example today. I didn't give the the punchline back because I thought it was not the right time. Someone told me today that I said, Lord, have mercy. It's not the right time. I'm waiting for the right time. It's someone who's a Muslim telling me that, oh, if we take the same car, going to the same destination, you take one car and I take another one, the most important is the destination. Am I here? To try and tell me that Allah and Jesus, it doesn't matter. The most important is that we're going to get to the same destination. I'm like, eh. I said, I'm not going to answer now because I need to sit down to answer this one. Do you understand? It's not true. There's only one way. I am the way. The. They just say there's a way. I am the way. So there's no two ways. And this is a lie that many people, even Christians, have. You cannot be a true Christian if you don't apply the word of God. I will tell you, you can never be called a Christian if you don't dress up like a Christian. You cannot pretend to be a Christian if your word of talking is not a Christian way of talking. You cannot be a Christian if you have not been changed inside, which is called conversion. You see, just like I said earlier with the example of that cowboy, the one in, in the middle of London who has never, never been in Texas or Nevada or I don't know where there's a desert. But 
the way they speak, you know that this person from head to toe is a cowboy. That's how we Christians should be. From head to toe, we need to know you are a Christian. You see? And people align them to themselves thinking that every way, as soon as I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, takes me to eternity. I'm sorry. Some people are still in fornication. They're not going to go to eternity because the Bible says so. Is it possible? You see? Some people are still in adultery. They're not going to go. It's not because you accepted Jesus Christ as, you know, it's just like that Muslim telling me today that it doesn't matter if we, if we are going to New York, you take British Airways and I take Air France, the most important is that we're going to reach the destination. Hmm. No, it's not like that with God. It's not like that with God. You're going to reach only if in that plane there is Jesus. If you take British Airways without Jesus, you're not going to reach. That's the difference. So, I said today, I'm giving you I will give you the answer soon. Do you understand? I will, because I need to explain well that you know what? We are going to the same destination, which is heaven, yeah? But to reach heaven, the plane ticket has to be stamped Jesus. So no matter what plane you take, if the stamp on your plane ticket is not Jesus, you're not reaching. You're not going to reach. Before you reach, there's going to be a door there that takes you down. Hell. I will explain that to her very soon. You see? And it's the same for us Christians who are not crucified. It is the same. Because, you know, there, there are people who are Christians or believers, but they're not, they don't repent of their sins. And the Bible says it's about repentance. Repentance is stop doing the same that is continual. Not something... The Bible says, seven times my servant will fall, seven times I will, raise, I will lift them up. But if you fall, it's different than that thing that you know you're doing and then you're sitting on it and you're drinking it and you are you are there, you're there, knowing that I'm a Christian. No, 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 I'm sorry. That one, check that your ticket truly says Jesus. Check it. Because someone who has Jesus, has the Holy Spirit in them, cannot be doing purposely, every day, on purpose, every single day, same kind of stuff, saying, oh, Jesus loves me, I love Jesus, I'm a Christian. Can't just that's not the Holy Spirit telling you something? The Holy Spirit is supposed to tell you, my friend. Come on, calm down. My friend, yay, I'm sad now. So if you don't even feel that anymore, there's no more conscience. So you, you, and you're telling me that you're hearing something? Nah. So we need to be very careful. Being identified with Christ in his death and resurrection is a very important topic to understand. That, it, that makes us understand that we need to change. Amen? Why then do we need to change? It's because we need to start living the church life. Why do we need to be identified with Christ? Because we need to start living the church life. Now some people will be like, hey, church life like a nun? Church life like priest? Church life, what do you mean? No, no, no. You see? What is church life? Church life is actually the way, the life that takes you to the land of opportunities. The land where milk is. The land where everything God has in store for you is. That's what church life is all about. In the church life, we are all from different backgrounds. We have different dispositions, different way of thinking. It doesn't matter. Different cultures, it doesn't matter for God. The most important is that individually in the church, God is with us. No matter how different we are, what God is doing with you is not what God is doing with me. What God is doing with her is not what God is doing with him. So that's what church life is all about. It's a life where every, that, I mean, I would say the diversity is there, but all together we make one. That is church life. But in the end, God is dealing with everyone differently. Yeah? Because we are one with Christ in his death. So, and we are also one in his resurrection. With, uh, we, we are resurrected with Christ. Therefore, we have to live as one together. It doesn't mean that God will take all of us to the same work, to the same thing. No, no. He still wants that oneness. He still wants that togetherness. He still wants that unity. But in that unity, he will still do everything differently with everyone. But people think that if I, meet, I put myself here compared to the others, it will go faster. It's the life of the devil. It is the life of the devil. You need to be in the midst, unity, love, and God sees all that, then he can single you out himself. But if you single yourself out, thinking you'll go faster than God, it will never happen. 
Church life is togetherness. Church life is, bring, is bringing things together, being together. It's actually family life. Do you understand? So why is it many people in the church don't move forward? Because they are within the church but not in the family. I hope it's clear. They are in the church, but they are not in the family. You see? I will give you an example. I've got an uncle or cousin, I can't remember, who abandoned and left his family a long time ago. Now he doesn't want to do anything with his family. Even when his mother would come, he would have the, the his domestic kid things at the door. You know what I mean? You know? You, like, you know what? I made it so you, my life is my wife, me, my family, but you guys know. You see? But when he became sick, yeah, he remembered that he had family. Do you understand? But there are people who live like that. They are within the church. But they are not part of the family. They are not part of church family. It's not because you do this or you do that that it means. Being part of the family is when you start caring and you start loving. That's what family is all about. This son who says no to his mother, he doesn't love. There's no love. There's no love. Therefore, God cannot accept that. So it is love, unity, togetherness that is church life. So in church, that's what we need to look for individually. Make sure that you share that love, you impact others with that love in a way that they will also love. That is church life. It's not only one person, it's all of us together bringing that love to shine in a way that God really wants to go in. You know, but the Bible says God is love. Therefore, where there is love, my friend, God just pours in, pam, pam, pam. And the same way, the devil likes what? This unity. And when the, the when is the little strap, what does it do? It brings more fire. So that there's, you know, so it's the contrary. So we need to be that, those people who have understood that God wants us to be crucified. Because if we are crucified, if we become those people who humble themselves, those people who are dying to, to self and accept to be crucified, with Christ, accept the death and resurrection of Christ, it is easy then to love and to be united with others. No matter how, no matter what, you try to bring unity, to live in unity, to be together. Therefore, the strength that God gives us will be manifested. See? So, togetherness is very important. Yes? So, Christ is the one who wants to be in our midst all the time. And when we are identified with him, then we can start possessing the land. I will tell you something. For you to possess what is yours, is it in the midst, in, in the church? You get that? Is it in the church where there's love and unity? You know, people think, if I come too close, I'm, I'm wasting time. You're not wasting time. Actually, you're multiplying your time. If I, 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 in the church, the love and unity that I'm doing here, listen, God will do the same out there for you. Because what is more important for him is what he has created. Amen? And you are the one he has created and created the church. And today, why, not, why is God is mind, more mindful of the church than your, your biological family? Because the church will be eternal. The church is there for long. The church is where you want more souls to come and be saved. Do you understand? Therefore, it's part of the kingdom already. The church is already in the kingdom. While our individual families may not be. Do you understand the difference? So mind the kingdom, do for the kingdom, be in the kingdom as a resurrected person, as someone who has understood what it means, uh, what Christ has done on the, Christ, uh, on the cross means, in a way that God will see it. Yes? And everything else, everything else he said shall be added unto you. God does not lie. He said that you should not even worry about your needs. Matthew 6, yeah? Don't worry about your needs. If you put my kingdom first and my righteousness first, which means doing what is right, I will mind about everything else. Everything else. Why is it he doesn't mind about everything else? Why is it, why is it he doesn't add everything else? Because our interest is not in the kingdom first. You see? So it's about the kingdom. That's what I was explaining that many people are in the church, but they are not in the family. You see? Because they are hard. It's not their first interest, it's not the kingdom. We need to really, really have that strong. I remember when we were in Haiti and then it was time for church, and I'm like, the boys were delaying, and Pastor Timothy has come. I let the boys, I let Pastor Timothy to run the church. 
I said, well, they will, they will find a way if you want send someone for them. Do you understand? I said, there's a time when I have no more children. Yeah? There's a time I have no more children, even if we were far away. There's a time I have no more children, I just have to go now. You're not going to delay me. That's it. And Pastor was even behind me, like, looking like, should we wait for them or should I come? He didn't know what to do. I'm like, me, I'm gone. They know the way. You understand? That's it. When, how far are you in your walk with Christ to say that I am being identified? Just think always about that cowboy in the middle of the city who is dressing and people are laughing at them because they are a cowboy in a city without a horse and talking like a cowboy. You know, it's very hot in the summer and they are dressed like a cowboy. You know? And people are like, you are mine. It doesn't matter. If you become that Christian that people look at you and start laughing, then you know that you are very far. Yeah? Far from the world and so near to the Lord. Amen? That's what it is. You need to be far from the world and very near to the Lord. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're coming from. It's just about the attitude and the way you do it. Amen? That is what will show. So our testimony should be like the apostle, like Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2, verse 20 that we read, I am crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Which means that I've got to lay my hands on Christ. And all my sins are given as an offering. I'm not going to sin anymore because I know that Christ did, died for me. Amen? So I'm trying not to sin. Amen? And you need to offer your peace to everyone. Offer peace. Peace has to be an offering. Yeah? You look for peace everywhere. No matter what they did to you. No matter what and how it happened. It's, ha it's about making peace because that's what God wants me to do. I don't care what you did to me. I don't want to know. But it's just peace. Amen? So, we need to understand what it means. Now, we offer Christ, um, we, we have to offer this because of what Christ did. And then, that's what makes us to be identified with Christ. And we become a living sacrifice. Amen? We're going to live in this identification with Christ in his death and resurrection. That is where Christ, uh, God himself, can use the seed which is Christ in us. You see? The seed of Christ is already in us. Yeah? When you start being really identified that way, you identify in Christ's death and resurrection, the seed in you can become useful to God. Amen? And then, you're going to see that even in the land where he puts you, there's fulfillment. There's fulfillment. But it has to start with that. Amen? Christ is in us, and Christ has the good land. And he is the good land in which our life should be fulfilled. But it starts with us abandoning ourselves to him. Amen? Amen. So I want us to pray this evening. We're going to stand up in Jesus' name. Amen? We're going to pray this evening.